So here is my long awaited video, how to choose the bicycle for you. How to choose your first bike, what do you need to get? Now I want you to get a piece of paper, grab it a pen, and I want you to take notes in this video. Because I'm going to make some really important points here that I've learned in the last 15 years as a cyclist lifestyle. I'm 35 years of age, I've never had a driver's license. And these are the things I'm going to share with you in the next 10 minutes. They're going to save you so much time, money, fitness and everything. So get a pen and paper, please take notes. Thanks. First of all, you gotta ask your question, what sort of riding do you wanna do? Are you gonna be on the road? Are you gonna be on the mountain bike trails? Are you gonna be on both? If you're gonna be on both, then get a 29er mountain bike. If you're just gonna be 99% of the road, get just get a road bike. If you I still ride off-road on my road bike, that's why I ride strong road bikes. That's why I don't ride those lightweight carbon wuss tanks that break in the first crash. I ride heavy duty stuff. We'll get into more of that later. If you're gonna do 99% of the road, Get a road bike. You can get a flat bar hybrid bike if you want. If your flexibility is really poor, you can get a flat bar bike. So the road bike is the best. If you live in the city, get a road bike. If you live in the hills, get a road bike. If you live in the desert, get a mountain bike. If all everything's just gravel and sand around you, get a mountain bike, get a 29er. Otherwise, get a road bike. Get a road bike. Get a road bike. Because flat bar means you're in this one position. Road bike, you got one, two, three positions. Yeah, sure, you can put bar ends in a flat bar, but the road bike is just you're going to be your best bet. Get a road bike. Don't listen to any salesperson that treats you like some moron who can't ride a bike. Get a road bike, and here's the bottom line. Find a bicycle shop that specializes in bike fit. I don't care how light your bike is or how cheap you got it. If it doesn't fucking fit you right, you got ripped off. You wasted your money. you got to get the bike fit. If you're on a holiday in some country that doesn't have specialist bike fitting stores, then just buy a $500 road bike or a $600 road bike and, and cross your fingers it's the right size and then when you get home you can get a specialist bike fitter to fit you up right. So that's my tip there. Bike fit is the most important thing. Bike fit. you got to have the right bike fit. And then get, get a whiteout pen. Get a whiteout pen for 50 cents from whoever, Walmart or whatever it's called. <laughs> get a whiteout pen and mark your seat post height. Where your height of your seat post is, mark it. Mark the fore and aft position where your seat is. Mark that. Mark the angle where your seat is, mark that. Dot your handlebars. So if anything slips in transit or just from riding and wear and tear, you got a reference point to go back to. So many people make the common mistake. They spend all the money. They get a bike fit. They'll fly halfway around the world, go to the bike fit, get the bike fit, and then they'll take the seat post out, go to put it back in, and go, ah, oh, ah, oh, where was the seat post meant to do? Because they didn't have the 50 cent liquid paper pen to mark it with. <laughs> mark your cleats, mark your seat post, mark your seat angle. Four and a half position, mark your handlebars, easy. Then people are like, I don't want to put liquid paper pen on my bike. So I go home, turn, turn off, click unsubscribe and go and watch Shane Dawson or something. So carbon versus alloy. Carbon, the pros of carbon is it's, um, what's the pros of carbon? I guess it sort of looks pretty cool. Alloy frames are just as light. Pros of carbon. The main pro of carbon is it looks cool. That's the, that's the only real benefit. People say, oh, it's more absorbent. I'll tell you what. The most absorbent part of your bike is your wheels and your tires. That's the most absorbent part. Your carbon frame, generally they're so light you feel every fucking bump. So I don't recommend carbon unless you're full on into racing and your bike is only used for racing and you've got to replace it in the next year because most likely your carbon bike is going to crash crack. The next time you have a crash, it's going to snap in half. And just look on the internet for broken carbon frames. Carbon frames are just drop breaking. Every shop's got a broken carbon bike in these days. They crack so easily. If you have the smallest crash, I've seen ten thousand dollar bikes just snap in half, just getting dropped. Carbon bars, carbon stems, carbon seat posts. Don't waste your time. Carbon fork steerer. Don't waste your time. Get an alloy steerer. Again, if you're riding a bike just for a few months and you're going to replace it, then yeah. Spend big bucks on lightweight stuff. That's cool. No, I'm, you know, that's, that's awesome stuff, but it's not durable, it's not strong, and it's not engineered for longevity, and it's not re non-recyclable. So chances are you're watching my video because you're a bit more into the eco lifestyle, so alloy is the way to go. I've got a bamboo frame personally, but that's a whole other topic. Here's some points. Write them down. Road bike, compact crank, meaning 50, 34 chain rings. Just write that down. Compact crank, 50, 34. Alloy steerer, mountain bike shoes and mountain bike pedals, a whiteout pen to mark your seat posts. You want alloy bars, alloy stem, alloy seat post, alloy frame. You want wheels where you can get spokes 
easy. So you don't want pre-built wheels that are like, you know, some sort of wanky carbon rim. Again, they're great things, but if you have a problem with them, they are hard to replace. They're hard to fix. They're expensive to fix. Not all shops can fix them, but if you use a standard spoke configuration, then any shop you travel into can fix your wheel for you. And there's all this thing about lightweight wheels, and I'll tell you what, they're, they're, they're fancy and they're sexy and they're, they're a little bit faster if you're in the Tour de France, but for the rest of us who don't race professionally and we don't need to save two seconds over a 40 kilometer time trial, any wheel will do for you. As long as the tire is pumped up to its optimum pressure, and, and the wheel is straight and doesn't have like a buckle in there. So that's the main thing. So you don't need lightweight wheels. That's just marketing hocus pocus, 1,000%. If you can afford them, if you want them, that's cool. You know, that's, that's fine, man. I've, I've used all that lightweight stuff and it's good fun, but it's really not durable, okay? So here we go. Here's a little tour of what we use in our bikes. Okay, this is Freely's bike. Now, you want to have a little saddlebag, and in here you have your glue, you have some patches, Little tire patches, these are the road bike specific, very small, about the size of a dime, size of your thumbnail. And the secret with the patches is you must let them dry for at least five minutes. You glue the patch, you glue the tube, and you let it dry for five minutes minimum, and then you stick them together with your thumb like that, hold it for 30 seconds, and then bang. You carry a spare tube, you carry your tire levers, plastic tire levers, don't use metal ones, you use, always use plastic because the metal ones can damage your rims. You carry a spare tube, patch kit. Little saddlebag that zips up. Seat, seat's a personal choice. Freely uses a, a race saddle because she's a lightweight girl and she's fit. Most people find a race saddle very comfortable. It's got a little bit of padding but not too much and it's very thin. You can see it's very narrow and you want narrow because the fat ones are really ineffective and they're very uncomfortable and can lead to injury. So you want a semi soft, not too soft, but just slim race saddle. And you want to have it level. See how that's level? We put a spirit level. It's got a little bit of a curve in the middle, but it's level. You still see that? Very level. You don't want to go up or down. You want it level. Level. Alloy seat posts. We want alloy seat posts. Carbon seat posts are weak. Carbon seat posts are flexy. You want alloy posts. You want it heavy and strong. It's an alloy frame. Carbon bikes, very fragile. They break very easily. They're great if you're a sponsored rider and you get a new bike every year. Otherwise, go the alloy. And this is a Trek under here, so we've got a lifetime warranty. Pedals, we use the XDR pedal, very strong pedal, very good bearing system, and the cleat lasts forever. So you can use flat pedals until you get confident, but then eventually get yourself the clippers pedals, very effective, and get the mountain bike shoe. Don't waste time with the road shoe. Road shoes are shit, they're only for racing. You can't walk in them, they're very impractical. They're a little bit lighter, but weight doesn't really matter. Because if weight mattered, I wouldn't be getting, I wouldn't be smashing people on my ten and a half kilo bamboo flex machine. So bike fits more important than weight. Always get mountain bike shoes with mountain bike pedals, and you're laughing. Now cranks, we want the compact crank. We want on the outside it's going to be a 50 chain ring. Inside it's going to be a 34. That's what's called a compact crank. It means the chain rings 34 tooth inside, 50 tooth outside. That's what you want, good cadence on the climbs. On the rear cassette, you want 9 speed or 10 speed, doesn't really matter, but you want the biggest one, you want about a 27, so you can get up anything and stay in a nice easy gear, 90 RPM, what the pros ride at. People go, I'm not a pro rider, it doesn't fucking matter. High cadence, easy pedaling, up steep climbs, what works. If you're on drugs and EPO, steroids, whatever, or if you're an absolute newbie, high cadence works for you. We don't use carbon rims because carbon rims suck because they break easy. And again, they're great if you're racing and you're in the Tour de France and you're getting free rims every 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 week. But for the everyone else, the alloy rims great because they wear very well and you can recycle them when you finish with them. Brakes, whatever. And the fork. Here's a fork. We want this is a carbon fork down here, but it's got an aluminium centerpiece and it's got an alloy steerer. So this is a steerer tube, this part that goes through here, that's called a steerer tube. And you, you don't want carbon. If it's carbon, it's going to crack a lot easier in a crash. So you want alloy. Alloy is stronger, alloy is more comfort, absorbs more shock, and it's also a lot stiffer. So alloy steerer is what you want. You want alloy stem. Carbon stems are shit, they're expensive, they break easy, and they're all show. Alloy is what you want. Alloy bars, again, carbon bars break easy in a crash, they, they're flexy as fuck and they're expensive as fuck. So get alloy bars, alloy stem, alloy steerer, alloy frame, 
don't waste your time with the carbon unless you're getting it for free. Now here's my bike again, you've got the seat height here, see that level? Nice and level. Alloy post. Got the alloy stem, alloy bars, alloy steer. You can see it here, it's not carbon, it's alloy. Alloy is stronger, carbon is weak. Carbon steerers are weak. The carbon fork's okay because it's got a, normally got an alloy sleeve on the heavier ones. And alloy rims, alloy rims. And this is what is this little secret weapon here, it's called a power meter. Power meter is the way to train whether you're a newbie or a professional athlete on the best DPO in the world, the power meter will help you achieve your goals. I'll do another video on that, but the power meter, when you can afford a power meter, get a power meter, and I rate the power tap. That's the best system, it's the lightest. You can take it on and off easy, it's just blah, blah, blah. Again, mountain bike pedals, just strong. They work well. I've got a compact crank on there, 50 on the outside, and 50, uh, 50 on the outside, 34 on the inside. Easy, easy stuff. And helmets. Whatever helmet fits your head the best, spend whatever it costs to get the helmet that you like the fit of. And these days you've got fancy colours and stuff. Wear a fucking helmet. Don't be a fucking idiot and wear no helmet. Don't be a hipster. Don't be a brain damaged hipster. Okay? Wear your helmet and buckle the fucker up and make sure it fits well. Try on different helmets. They're like socks and shoes. Individual fit. And you can get a little mirror. I mean, I bought, I bought this mirror just for touring, but I've left it on because in racing it's such a good thing to have. Because you don't have to go to your shoulder, you can see people's faces in the mirror. So this one's called the Italian Bike Mirror, and it's on eBay. Look it up. What about tyres? This tyre is made by Specialized. It's called the Specialized Armadillo. It's a very strong tyre, and I've raced Cat 1 on them. So they're very fast, very strong, very strong. Not the cheapest, but very good. And this little valve adapter is a good idea. Because if you're at a gas station, you don't have a spare pump, you can use a little valve adapter there. So uh, to undo the valve, you just unscrew it like that, and then give it a little tap. Because sometimes it jams, and then you can put the pump on there. So uh, we close that off, because we're not pumping anything up. And stuff to have at home, it's good to have a little Allen key set. You can get like a small multi-tool and take that with you. A floor pump's great. There's a website called Wiggle. You can get this stuff off Wiggle. And you want to have your tyres pumped up on the road bike to at least 110. So we up here. 110 and then you pump up to there. On the side of the tyre will have a rating system but 110 is most tyres for the, for the road bike. What, what brand of bikes you use? I wouldn't waste your time with all these European brands that don't offer you any longer than like a one or two year warranty and charge a, you know, some high flyer price tag for nothing, for some product that's inferior. A lot of those top brands are really poor quality. Judge a brand's quality by its warranty on its frame. If the frame is 12 months or 5 years warranty, it's a shit product. If it's got a lifetime guarantee, that means good craftsmanship. Get that bike. Don't waste your time with the crappy 5 year or less warranties. They're disposable bikes and they're great if you're a professional rider and you're replacing your bike every year for free or whatever. But if you want a bike for longevity, get something with a lifetime warranty. Specialized lifetime warranty on the road bikes. Cannondale lifetime warranty. Giant lifetime warranty. Trek lifetime warranty. There's a few other brands out there, but these the, the Bane Force Specialized Giant Trek Cannondale, I'm a big fan. Lifetime warranty, and they, make, they all make quality alloy entry-level road bikes. Now, an entry-level road bike is between $700 and $1,500, really. And a $1,500 road bike is just as good as a $10,000 road bike. You can do just as... If, if you're going to win a race, you're going to win it on a $1,500 road bike. It doesn't matter if it's ten grand, you are still going to win. Lance Armstrong could win the Tour de France on a $1,500 road bike. In today's technology, 1,000%, I'm sure of that. So you don't need to spend big bucks. $1,500 is all you need to spend. You can spend more if you want, but that's really... $1,500, man, you can get some awesome deals from last year's models for $1,500. You can get a killer bike. And you can do anything on that bike that you can do on a $10,000 bike. You can climb just as fast, sprint just as hard on that $1,500 bike. Now, why do people spend $10,000 on a bike? Just because they've got money to burn, that's cool. You know, you've got a fancy bike or whatever, but you don't need it. If you if you want it, if you can afford it, that's fine, but you don't need it. Don't think that you have to have a 10 grand bike before you can really zoom along, because that's nonsense. I'm riding a 10 and a half kilo bike, which is equi equivalent to maybe a $400 bike in terms of weight wise. And it's I'm smashing it. I am smashing it on the climbs. So you don't need a super light bike. You need a bike that fits you and it works well with the tires pumped up and the chain clean. That's all you need. A bike that fits and is maintained well. 
That's all you need. And you're gonna need a drink bottle. I use the Camelback. This one's called the Camelback Podium. It's got a great little thing you can turn it off so you can have it in your backpack, it won't leak. Over my MacBook, doesn't leak. Now that's what you call confidence. Great product, it's BPA free, meaning it's a better quality plastic, not as not as toxic. People go, I don't want to use plastic, I use glass bottles on my bike. I'll tell you what, don't ride with me if you're using glass, because chances are you're gonna have a crash sometime and drink bottles made out of glass are not designed for safety glass. They're not like windscreens that just shatter into little little pieces. A glass drink bottle on the bike or your backpack is a fucking death weapon. Please use plastic bottles. The Camelback Podium is my pick. You need a bottle. You need to stay hydrated. If you let your mouth get dry, you're going to in increase your chance of dental cavities. Always have a moist mouth. Please, drink your water. Just sip it. Always keep your mouth moist. And always be pissing clear at least every two hours. If your urine is yellow or straw, you need to drink more. Your urine always should be clear at least every two hours. Go and water the bushes. Stop. We get back on and keep on cranking. Hydration is key. Because if you get dehydrated, you're gonna store more fat, you're gonna store more toxins in your fat cells, which means your ass is gonna get bigger, your neck's gonna get bigger, your gut's gonna get bigger. If you keep getting dehydrated, you're gonna be more toxic, you're gonna be more acid, and that's gonna increase your weight gain, your fat gain, and your fluid retention. Always stay hydrated. Just hydration is key. So that's it, thanks for watching. Just a quick recap, we want a road bike, if you're gonna do it on the road, we want alloy, alloy bars, stem, steerer, seat post. Alloy is the strongest, it's the best material to use, it absorbs more road shock than carbon. Don't believe the hype, test ride, then decide. Alloy is the way to go, more durable, cheaper, just better engineering. Carbon's fragile, breaks, but looks cool until it's broken. You wanna have a drink bottle always, the Camelback Podium. There's my little tip there, Camelback Podium. Good website to get bike parts from is Wiggle because they ship really quick stuff and Wiggle's just awesome to deal with. Got the wrong products, send it back. Thanks for coming. Fantastic, cheap, super, super cheap, big range and awesome customer service. That's what you want now, customer service. You want a bike fit, you want a bike that fits you properly. So invest heavily in your local shop who is good at expertising in bicycle fit. Shop around, read on forums. You want the bicycle fit. You want to mark your seat post where your height is. You want to mark your cleats, things like that. When you get cycling shoes, get mountain bike shoes, get mountain bike pedals. I'm racing Cat 1 with mountain bike shoes and pedals. It doesn't give you any performance difference if you're using a road shoe or whatever. Maybe if you're in a hill climb time trial with Lance Armstrong, Cato Evans, and Ivan Basso, and you've got to save five seconds, having a road shoe might help you do that over a 20 kilometer climb. Until then, leave the road shoes for the penguins who want to walk around the cafe and slip up and have to buy new Jurace and speed play cleats every month or two because they're wearing out because they're walking around. Road shoes are crap. I'm never ever going to use road shoes again. Mountain bike shoes and pedals for the win. I'm passionate about that because you can actually walk around. They're functional versus the road shoe. Totally non-functional. So bike fit. Get alloy. Get mountain bike shoes and pedals and have your drink bottle. Wear your helmet. Bike fit. Things like that. Just the basic fundamentals. Eat a high carbohydrate, low fat, preferably a vegan lifestyle. I've got plenty of videos about that. You can look that up. But just that's where it's at. The bicycle is such a wondrous piece of machinery to use in today's society. Get on your bike. I'll see you on the road. Post your comments down below. What experiences have you had and what do you enjoy on your cycling lifestyles? Thanks for watching, gang. See you soon. Peace.